Greetings, fellow adventurers, and welcome back to my channel. It's a pleasure to have you join us as we uncover the secrets of George's Paul Franois Laurent Log. George's Paul Franois Laurent Log 19 December 1853 5 December 1937 was a naturalist French painter of the 19th and early 20th century. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting early life and exploring its intricate connections to our topic. Georges Paul Franois Laurent Log was born on 19 December 1853, the third of five children, in Montevilliers, a commune in the same maritime department in the Haute Normandy region in northern France just to the northeast of Le Havre. He was the only son of a painter, Sir Franois Log 1823-1896 and his wife, Cleston Marie Mulzieu Log 1825-1909. The elder Log was raised in Saint Quentin, in the Picardy region of France, where he received his early training in visual arts with Louis Nicolas Lemassel 1788-1870, a pupil of Jacques Louis David 1748-1825. He moved to Paris at age 17 in order to enroll in the École des Beaux Arts, studying under Franois Edouard Picard 1786-1868. He was a successful painter, exhibiting at the Paris Salon from 1845 to 1880, receiving medals in 1851, 1855 and 1861. He specialised in historical subjects, among his works is Death of William the Conqueror and Death of Zerberin. In addition he painted more intimate scenes characterised by a diffuse light, as well as portraits. By 1850 he had married Clestin Marie Mauziou, a woman from his hometown. They moved back to Picardy from Paris to raise their growing family, settling in the village of Noy not far from Saint Quentin. However they kept a residence in Paris, which would have been almost a necessity for a salon painter at the time. As a result, their son spent his childhood in both Paris and Picardy, where Clestin's family also maintained a country home. It is likely that all of Sir's children would have received art lessons from their painter father. Three of them, two girls and the one boy, Georges did pursue careers in art. As the only son of a painter, naturally the boy was encouraged by his father. A promising young artist, he enrolled in the Ecole de Beaux Arts in 1870. However, hostilities of the Franco-Prussian War commenced in July of that year, with the war continuing until early 1871, followed by two months of the Paris Commune, suppressed in May 1871. This undoubtedly interrupted George's studies, but he was able to resume when these conflicts were over. He began his Paris studies with Isidore Pills 1813-1875, who had also trained under Piquet. After Pills' death, Georges studied with historical painter and portraitist Henry Lehman 1814-1882. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore at the Col de Beaux Arts. A naturalist painter emerges through a fresh lens, unlocking new perspectives. The Col was a critical period for Log in several respects. There he met Julian Dupper 1851-1910, another young art student who became his friend, colleague, and later brother-in-law. Dupper also hailed from an artistic family, and after the Ecole, Dupper went to Picardy to study with the elder Log, whose daughter Marie Eleanor Franois he married in 1876. For both Georges and Julian, realism was in their blood, with its long tradition in European and French painting. The near photo realism of many painters, such as David, loomed large in the Salon and the various art schools. However, new currents were in the air and undoubtedly the two young artists were exposed to and influenced by two schools, the Impressionists and to some degree the Pre-Raphaelites. The movement away from photorealism had begun with Impressionist precursors such as Gustav Corbett 1819-1877, Edouard Monet 1832-1883, and Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot 1796-1875. For these painters, realism meant finding reality in ordinary life, such as country scenes or peasants, and in particular, seeking its essence. This lesson was learned by the Impressionists, who took it a step further, and experimented with the play of light and colour in outdoor settings. 
were they painted directly from life. Their paintings were quite outside the prevailing realist tradition and were accordingly rejected by the Salon. The Impressionists organized their own exhibitions in the years 1874-1886. The pre-Raphaelite movement had begun earlier in England, in 1848. Although no French painters were involved, news of and works by these artists reached Paris long before the Urs, with exhibits there as early as 1855. Rossetis' declaration of pre-Raphaelite goals may have been known by Log and Duck to have genuine ideas to express to study nature attentively, so as to know how to express them to sympathize with what is direct and serious and heartfelt in previous art, to the exclusion of what is conventional and self-parading and learned by rote to produce thoroughly good pictures and statues. These goals were not so different from those of the Impressionists, despite the large difference in the resulting paintings. While the pre-Raphaelites sought photorealism in one sense, in another their paintings went quite beyond it to search for authenticity. Digesting these currents, Log and Dupper were able to meld their formal academic training and its realist emphasis with Impressionist-inspired handling of light and brush, as well as something of the direct, serious, and heartfelt intensity of the pre-Raphaelites. They became what may be described as naturalist painters, a designation that included painters from many European countries at the time. Unlike either realism or impressionism, naturalism was not a formal movement, but an international sensibility that combined a concern for the depiction of ordinary working people with formal aesthetic elements that captured the subject in the context of the modern world. Like many of his French naturalist colleagues, Log's focus was primarily on rural life where the domestic scenes of beautiful young peasant mothers or grittier images of farm workers dragging themselves home at the end of a day of back-breaking labour. Some naturalist painters, such as Jules Alexis Munier 1863-1942, leaned more in the direction of photorealism akin to the pre-Raphaelites, even to the point of utilising photography to help with composition. Log and Dupper, however, did not take this path, preferring a different, less literal style. Since Log shared similar artistic ideas and sensibilities with his now brother-in-law, the two remained close friends until Dupper's death in 1910. Later they would live near each other in Paris, in the 16th arrondissement, and in addition share a studio where they worked at 20 Boulevard Flandrin. In this section, we'll be exploring success at the Paris Salon. The Paris Salon was the place where every aspiring artist would seek to begin his career. During the 19th century it was probably the greatest art venue in the world. It was a juried show, so having one's paintings exhibited was a sort of guarantee of quality for prospective buyers. Medals were awarded for what the jury deemed outstanding work. Log made his debut at the Paris Salon of 1877 with painting 1226, Le Reapers de Moissonneurs, The Meal of the Harvesters. He exhibited there on a regular basis, and in 1881 received bronze medals for his paintings En October in October and Power of Oogle Poor Beggar Woman. In 1878 Log's Salon painting En October was exhibited in Vienna, which established his reputation in other European countries. He received another bronze medal in 1889. In 1887 Log married Yvain Line German of 1858-1958, known to the family as Eva at clermont sur ois Eva's father was professor of English in St. Quentin, at the Lick Henry Martin. Log's family resided there, so it was convenient. The couple however moved to Paris, no doubt because of Log's expanding career. A year later, in 1888, their daughter, Denise Sir Franois 1888-1979 was born. Eva was a musician by training, though it is not known if she continued to pursue her career in Paris. She was among other things a composer, and it seems that for her wedding to George's she wrote a trio for organ, violin and cello. Let's now turn our attention to international acclaim and uncover the fascinating insights it brings to the table. During the Erz Log's success continued. One of his 1891 salon entries, O Printemps de Lovie in the Springtime of Life, which won a medal, 
was chosen for exhibition at the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893, forming part of the French art shown this image right side. The painting clearly shows the melding of Impressionism with the intensity of the Pre-Raphaelites, not unlike what was done by other painters around the same time, such as John William Waterhouse 1849-1917 and Arthur Hughes 1830-1915, see his April Love. William Walton's Guide to the Art and Architecture in the Exposition discusses Logg's painting and observes its naturalist authenticity. More of these humble folk, artfully arranged but with very little artificial glossing over of their awkward rusticity, may be seen in George Sick Logs in the springtime of life, a very upright and much embarrassed pair facing each other in a pleasantly illuminated bit of greenery. Arson Lepage was one of the first to render this subtle charm of the tender passion burning sweetly through an uncouth exterior, like the flame of a horn lantern, as it were. In 1900, at the exposition Universelle in Paris, this painting received another medal, this time a silver medal. Images of Logg's works began to appear in various publications, including famous paintings of the world 1894, which was an early type of introductory art history text. The authors selected Logg's painting Burger et Mutum Shepherdis and Lamb, see illustration in gallery below, a charming picture of a shepherdess feeding her favourite lamb. It is a simple story the artist has chosen to tell, but he has set it in a scene of tender and idyllic beauty, thoroughly appropriate to the gentle theme of affection he has selected for the central thought. The theme of the shepherdess is one to which Log returned many times. Typical is the Bugger o Tricket shepherdess knitting, shown to the right, which like o Printemps de Lovi shows pre raphaelite as well as Impressionist influences. Other paintings on the Shepherdess theme can be seen in the gallery below. Logg's exhibitions as well as his exposure in books caused him to achieve a following with art collectors, particularly in America. American fascination with French art was growing as was American wealth, boosted by the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in addition to the opening of galleries by European art dealers in major US cities such as New York, Chicago, and San Francisco. A 1906 auction catalogue published by the American Art Association features an illustration of Logg's painting coming through the right Travers Le Siegel. In 1907 Logg was elected to be a member of the Committee of the Société des Artistes Franais, established in 1881 with the primary task of organising the Salon des Artistes Franais, replacing the older Salon which the French government no longer handled it. In 1908 Logg became a member of the Salon Jury. It appears that at that point he no longer submitted paintings to it for exhibition. His last paintings to the Salon seem to have been in 1907, O Approaches du Crepuscle The Coming of Twilight and Le Reapers O Champs, Soleil Couchant Meal in the Fields at Sunset. There was no doubt much sorrow in his family with the passing of his mother in 1909 and that of his brother-in-law and close friend Julian Dupper in 1910. Likewise, the years of World War I must have been difficult for the family in St. Quentin, which was occupied by German forces in 1914, with the population forced to evacuate in 1916, followed by looting and damage or destruction to 80% of the buildings. In this chapter, we'll be unravelling the Enigma of fame from children's books and discovering its transformative power. Despite the difficulties in these years, there were bright spots in Logg's life. His work reached new audiences on account of its use in American children's textbooks. In 1904, educator Ellen M. Sear D. 1920 wrote a series of textbooks, Sears Readers that sought to introduce art history to elementary school students in the Boston area. Sear used Logg's painting Milking Time to illustrate a story in Sear Graded Art Readers, book I, I see pages below. She explained her goals in selecting this type of illustration. The artist, like the poet, perceives a delicate meaning in the humblest scenes which may surround him. The child with his vivid imagination is susceptible to these impressions and can soon learn to recognize truth and beauty as presented to him in pictures. This sentiment, unfortunately, has been lost in later generations of elementary children's readers. 
Later, another educator, Jenny Hall, used one of Log's paintings as part of a new curriculum that combined painting and poetry, in her case for older students. She matched the preferred one with a poem by Christina Rossetti, Snodrup and Lan. See pages below. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting last year's to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. After World War I, with its large-scale mechanized destruction, all aspects of the environment in France changed quite drastically, especially with respect to culture. This change not necessarily for the better was already underway in the pre-war years, but accelerated afterwards. Naturalism and even Impressionism no longer had much interest for newer generations of painters, who it seems felt that Surrealism and Dadaism were better suited to the times. By 1930 Log had been painting and exhibiting for over 50 years, and so with his eyesight failing, he and his wife chose to retire and left Paris to settle in the village of Bora in Picardy, about 50 miles northeast of Paris. Despite his vision problems, Log continued to work, though only painting small sketches. He died in Bora on December 5, 1937. His wife Eva lived on until 1958, dying just shy of her 100th birthday in Liverpool. The spotlight now falls on works as we delve deeper into its details. Beaux Arts de Cocasson Les Premiers Pos Salon de 1883 Georges Log Exemple Les Premiers Pos First Steps, Must de Beaux Arts de Cocasson, Paris Salon. 1883 Le Record de Champs Return from the Fields Le Record de Champs Return from the Fields Shepherd is feeding her sheep Shepherd is feeding her sheep Le Reapers de Moissonneurs Le Reapers de Moissonneurs Meal of the Harvesters Family Paris Salon 1877 And June Moissonneurs Un June Moissonneurs Young Girl Harvester in the Field Le Hire de Treya Milking Time Le Hire de Treya Milking Time Paris Salon 1892 Said Graded Art Reader I I Milking Time Fidge from Children's Art Reader by Ellen Sear Said Graded Art Reader I I Milking Time Up Fidge from Children's Art Reader by Ellen Sear The Preferred Owned Fidge from Book by Jenny Hall Using Painting by Lobb to Illustrate a Poem by Christina Rossetti. For additional paintings and works in other media, visit the webpage Pintries at Sculptures. Now, let's redirect our focus towards paintings in museums and discover its significance in our narrative. In the United States Brown Museum of Art, Valparaiso, Indiana. In France, Partiment de l'Alsace, Portrait du Senator Franois Ferdinand Mulzieu, 1906, Oil on Canvas, Paris. Mus du Louvre, Soya de Zorages, 1937. Must National de Arts et Traditions Populaires, Saintis, Mustel Chevenage, Entement d'une June Philatricate, Oil on Canvas, Bolin Samaire, She Museum, En Octobre, Oil on Canvas, Nantes, Must de Beaux Arts, Le Prefer, Oil on Canvas, Burke, Must de France du Paul Sud, Retour de Ch, Oil on Canvas, Crest, Mary, Les Glanuses, Oil on Canvas. In the Uck Museum of Ipswich, Payson's Dans and Champ de Chaum, 1882. As we progress through this video, let's now turn our gaze towards medals. Bronze, Salon de Paris, 1881 for Portrait du Senator Henry Martin, Bronze, Exposition Universelle de 1889, Silver, Exposition Universelle de 1900. I love hearing from you, so leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments.